Hey everyone, welcome back to Web Squadron. We're going to be exploring a free plugin called Site Origin CSS and how it can help you take some elements of um, Elemental just a step further. Um, if you're not too hot on CSS or you don't like having to work out what the code is, this really, really can help you. This does not replace any other great plugin out there like code snippets or anything like that. This is just about helping you to be able to work out what is the code I need to put in? Because I want to do something very, very specific and I don't want to have to add in another big bloated plugin just to do that. And I'm sure you're going, yeah, but you've just told us don't add in any plugins. Now you want us to add in this site origin CSS. Yeah, but it is so simple in what it does. It's not going to be adding lots of, you know, third party additional tertiary bloated um, widgets that you don't need. OK, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. I'm in Elementor. And I'm just going to add in slides like so. We have slide. I'm going to get rid of all of them so we just have one. We've got one slide. And I'm going to modify this really simply. I'm going to go to the style and I'm going to say I want it to be to the left. I Well, I want the horizontal position to be to the left aligned, but I also want the text to be left aligned. Great. But I now want the button to be actually over on the right hand side and I want the button to be roughly in line with where the text is. Okay, cool, no problem. Let's go to button. Um, hold on, I can do the width and I can do the radius, but oh dear, there's no option. I'm a little bit stuck now. How do I get that button over to the right hand side? And this is where I'd go back to the client and go, look, this is going to cost you an extra £20,000. Let's just go with it like how it is. Yay. And they will probably go, yeah, OK, then. But if you've got your heart really set on it or you've got a client who is very adamant about what they want, you've got to work out a way to do it. And this is where Site Origin CSS will save your day. Right. Let's just click update and let's go back over to plugins. Now, it's already installed on this staging site, but I'll just show you where it is. Go to add new. It is free, okay? And just type in site origin. You can type in CSS, but you're gonna get loads of CSS codes pop up, plugins, and you want site origin CSS. It's already active, install it, activate it, job done. In WordPress, you go to appearance, and there is now a new option, custom CSS. Okay, there it is. And when you click into that, it's got another window for the CSS code, at which point you probably want to just collapse off your chair and crawl out the room and disconnect the power and never see me again. Or you can click the eye that's watching you at the moment on the screen over there, OK? That eye is going to let you now see your website so we can start to hack in to the CSS coding behind it. Right, we click that. And you're brought over to your home or your landing page or whatever is the first page you got on your site. I'm going to cl click over here and just type CTA. The CTA was the name of the page where I put the slide. You're going, call to action, slides, what are you going on about? Yeah, I know, okay. Sometimes I can be a little bit lazy. You know, I don't want to overdo my fingertips, but CTA is the page. I hit return and we're over to the page we just built with the slide and we can clearly see that button. Now when I move my mouse over any element on here, whether it's the header, the footer, whatever, can you see it starts to activate it? Well, it starts to inspect it. So it's just like when you inspect a page, which is what most really good coding people would do. You would open your page, you would right click it and you would click inspect. And it will then open up that gobbledygook window on the right hand side or below your screen. And it's going to have all the code. And then you're going to try and mess around with it. And I know some people are really, really comfortable with that. I'm a little bit 50 50. Sometimes I'm like, yay, cool, I got it. And sometimes I'm like, what? And I just don't get it. OK, so we're going to be looking at the button. OK, so we've clicked on the button and you'll have lots of gobbledygook along the top here. But the one you're really, really interested in is the one here about the elemental slide button, OK, or whatever it's called. Just look for the word button. You'll know which one it is because it is right there for you. What you might want to do, though, is just also slide to the right just in case there is anything else on here on the screen and there isn't. So 
I just like to be sure that there isn't another component to the left or right of it. But anyway, we're touching the button. I'm going to just click it again because I really want to be sure that I'm only ever going to touch that. Um, if you've got, say, a button with an overlay effect, like a hover effect, sometimes the hover or the overlay might be the very last option on the page. And if you haven't gone back a step to the actual button, any change you make will affect the overlay or the hover, but not the actual widget that you wanted to touch. Okay, so now I've touched it. We then have some options on the left hand side, which are text, we're changing the text styling of this, decoration or layout. And without going through all of it, can you see what it's got there? I mean, look, you've got text. So if I was to click over here, I could start to mess around with the text. Look, I could change the color literally on the fly. I mean, it, you would do this with an elemental styling anyway, so so don't touch it, right? Let's just let's just get rid of that. We're not doing that. Okay. Weight, style, you know, transforming the text, left line, right line, whatever. Okay. What we're really interested in, Bo, is getting that slide or that button within the slide to be right aligned and a little bit up. Okay. We also have decoration for changing the background color. You could insert an image into the background of that. Be specific though, so if you just stick in a 1000 by 500 image, you're only going to see that much of the image. But if you have carefully built an image or a color scheme or something like it might be molten lava and you've, you've built a button in um, an image in Canva which is only, two, I don't know, 100 pixels by 50 pixels, you could insert that in by clicking over here and uploading it and it might look quite good, but again we're deviating. Let's go to layout. Okay, here's now where we're gonna to start to position where that button goes. So the first thing we're gonna do is just change the position. And normally it will be blank, and I'm just gonna set it to be relative, okay? I'm then gonna to go to the uh, absolute position, and I'm gonna start from the left. I tend to always do that. And I'm gonna to start to click this button, and look, as I click it, that button is moving. Magic! I'm gonna hit 440 and it's shot over to that side. Let's just move me a bit more. Let's go for 600. Let's go for a bit more. Of course, bear this in mind, though, on how big your screen is and what you're doing, okay? And we're now gonna just, now we've moved it 800 pixels to the right. And what we'll then do is we've done that. Now what we'll do is we'll do the bottom. So I'm now gonna increase that to be about, about there. Let me get my root, my little iPad out. Yeah, we'll go there. Do you love it? That's that's how I check if things are level, perfectly straight. Brilliant, isn't it? Um, you can get this from any stationery store, by the way. It's just a pad. Okay, it's just a pad. Right. Okay. So what I've done is I've just moved it. Okay. Now that's all I'm going to do. That is it. Okay. I just touched the position, and I did the bottom. Uh, board margin position and I did it from the left as well. Okay, I then click the tick box. When I click the tick box, I'm returned back over here and it's put all the changes I've done over here. Let's just get rid of that color one because we didn't actually need that in the end. Okay, so left, 800 pixel, position is relative, bottom, 62 pixels up. You have two things you can do here. Number one is you just leave that and hit save and it is saved for you here. Sometimes that's the safest thing to do. Or you can just copy it, delete it from here. Okay, it's gonna hit save. Go back to your page. So let's go to CTA. It's meant to say slides, sorry. Okay, and we're back to square one. Now, if we had left it over there and I had saved it, when I go over to this page, it would have done what we had told it to do. But it depends, there's two schools of thought. There'll be those that will leave it in the plugin, and there'll be those that say, well, I like to see everything in relation to the actual widget. So I click the pencil or the edit. I go to advanced. I go to custom CSS and I am going to paste that in. And I am now going to hit update. And I am now going to do a little song and dance and say, yes, we've done it. And that will now be activated for basically every slide we do. So let's go to content. Let's make a copy of this slide and another copy, another copy, another copy, however we want to make. They've all got the click here button now, and it is a real click here button. Okay, it's not a fake button. It is now on the right hand side. So we just used a free plugin 
to modify something that within the realms of possibility wasn't possible within the styling, but now it is. Hello? I mean, by the way, though, you must take into account and appreciate that when you go to responsive mode, okay, that button now is way over there. It's off the screen. Look, it's like, you know, I can't even stretch it that far enough in the mobile mode. It's way over there. And that is why what you would have to do is just add in an extra little bit of code. So if I go over to um, uh, the code here, what you need to do is you need to then, you know, just above the code here, you'd have to put in a media. You would have to say basically only do that change where the only position it to the right, sorry, where the uh, minimum pixel width is, I don't know, whatever it is. So let's just go to desktop. At a minute it says 1140, I'd probably say go for about seven, um, 800 pixels. So what we'll do is we'll put a bit of code in here as well. So I'm going to paste into here this bit of code here. And this is going to say media only screen and max width is 600. So let's just change that to be uh, about 800, might even go 900. And we're just going to change this to say min. Okay, so where it says max, let's just change it to say min. Okay, so if we now view this on um, responsive mode, oh, we are in responsive mode, there we go. On the mobile, it will be however you've set it to be, and it will be wherever it normally would be. On the tablet, it will also do the same. But when you go to desktop, because we've now said the minimum width must be 900, anything that is 900 pixels or more in width will now activate that code. So the button goes whoop, whoop, like that. And you've now just basically created a bit of code. You will notice there's a red cross there because I just need to put in another close bracket there because of that one up there just over... Get this right in my hands. I never get this right in my fingers. Just over there, you can see it. Okay, right. So that is a way of how you use a free plugin to just literally modify what you have on the screen. I hope that's been really, really useful. Because um, I do see this crop up now and again. People go, oh, well, I want to do something, but how do I do it? And sometimes the most common reply is, use a bit of CSS coding. Great if you know how to do CSS coding, but if not, use this tool, make the change, and it gives you the code. Eureka! Love it. I hope you like this, so give us a like, subscribe, and I will see you soon. Goodbye.